Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with a new video, and today we're gonna to be doing an interesting comparison. We will be taking a look at the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 against the Sigma 85mm f1.4 DGDN art lens for the Sony E-mount. Now you might be asking, Alex, why are you comparing a Canon lens against a Sony lens? Well, as you know recently, Canon has blocked all third-party manufacturers from producing lenses for the RF mount, and I think there's a little fear in that decision. Third-party manufacturers have produced incredible lenses the last few years, and some, I would say, rival first-party lenses. In this case, we're looking at two different price points. I have them pulled up right here. The Canon RF 85 1.2 is currently on sale, so you can get it for $25.99, Normally retails for $27.99, one of the most expensive RF lenses you can get. The Sigma 85, the Sigma 85 millimeter currently retails for $11.99, which means you can buy two of the hose for the price of the Canon RF version. Are you getting double the value? That's the question we're gonna ask ourselves today, and we're gonna take a look at in this comparison. So, here's how we're gonna do things. I'm gonna play a slideshow of images I shot with both lenses. Just so you know, the Sony was shot with the a7 IV and the Canon was shot with the R6 Mark II. The slideshow will have all the images edited. If you like the look, I do have my preset down below. After the slideshow, we'll go ahead and take a deep dive and pixel peep at the raw images without my preset and see if we can spot some differences. I'm excited for this comparison because if you're familiar with the channel, I was a previous Canon shooter, and I have said that the RF lenses are close to perfect. I used to own the RF 85 1.2, and I loved every minute of it. It's a huge lens, but it's magical. For this video, I don't have the RF 85 1.2, I actually rented it, so I won't be doing a physical comparison. Just know that the RF 85 1.2 is almost twice the size of the Sigma, and it is a big lens. I've never really complained about the size because the performance has always been top notch. Anyways, enough of me talking. Let me go ahead and play the slideshow and then we'll take a deep dive into the photos. <laughs> Okay, what did you guys think? I'm actually very surprised by the results. We'll talk about it more in detail here as I do a deeper dive, so let's go ahead and jump straight to the point. So here I have both images, and as you can see by the metadata, on the left we have the Canon, and on the right we have the Sigma. This is an interesting image because from a normal standpoint, they both look tech sharp, but when we zoom in at 100%, we're gonna see that the Canon is actually really sharp and nailed focus. The Sigma almost front focused a little bit where the model here looks sharp, but not necessarily sharp, sharp. So uh, here I think the lens did miss focus. I'm not sure where it nailed, but the Canon here performs as it should, looks sharper and obviously nailed focus. So here we're gonna give this image uh, we're gonna name the winner here the Canon, but let's go ahead and look at another set of images. Okay, in this next set, again, we're gonna see some differences. On the left, we have the Sigma, on the right, we have the Canon, and we're gonna see that the flare on the Sigma actually kind of overpowers the subject here. So you can see that the Canon retains tons of contrast, and the sun on the right-hand side isn't really causing a flare, which means the subject looks sharper, more contrasty. Now here's gonna be preference if you like the flare or not. Again, I'm not gonna necessarily say one's better than the other, but you can see here how that flare actually interferes with the image a little bit on the Sigma, and you have a haze on the model's face where the Canon, again, looks perfect. 
So, so far from these two images, we've kind of determined the Canon is definitely looking like it's a better lens. Zooming in the background, you can also see that the Canon does have rounder bokeh, just by a hair. One thing to note, settings are the same, except the Canon's at 1.2 versus 1.4, and the bokeh difference isn't that different. So one thing to note. Let's move on to the next image and see if Canon continues the streak here of coming out on top. And this is the image that surprised me the most. So you saw in the previous images that the Sigma actually had a flare because the sun was on the right hand side. In this image, the sun is directly behind the subject. This is a very challenging image. And you can see here that the Canon falls apart a little bit and the Sigma maintains contrast throughout the entire image. Before I zoom in, you're gonna see here on the left hand side, the Canon actually produces a bigger lens flare as well here in the bottom and the Sigma has a less pronounced flare. Zooming in, you're gonna see that the Canon lost all contrast, definitely hazy throughout the entire image and the Sigma maintained contrast. You're also gonna see a purple hue here from the flare on the Canon and overall, the Sigma has more contrast. They're both sharp, but you can see how this flare just overpowers the image and just makes it more challenging when you're editing the photo. So really surprised here at the Sigma just completely outperformed the Canon in probably one of the most challenging situations. Let's go ahead and go to another image. Okay, so here we have another image. The Canon's on the left, the Sigma's on the right. And when we zoom in, we're gonna see here that both images are tack sharp. Now, you're gonna see that the Sony's a little bit bigger because the Sony's actually a 33 megapixel file versus 24 megapixels. I didn't change the size of the images for this comparison, so excuse me for that, but you can see here that lens performance, they're both equally as sharp. Really hard to say one is sharper than the other. Another thing to note, again, the bokeh quality, if you look at the Canon, you do have rounder bokeh in the background versus more oval shaped on the Sigma. I mean, to be honest, you're really nitpicking there. The images both look great. And right now, I would say the comparison is getting tighter and tighter. So let's take a look at another set of images. Here we have another image where the sun is behind the subject. The Canon's on the left, Sigma's on the right. We're gonna see that the Canon has a lens flare here at the bottom. So does the Sigma. The Sigma actually has two little flares versus just one rainbow colored one with the Canon. Zooming in though, we're gonna see that both images are sharp. Again, the Canon actually looks hazier, which means the Sigma has a bit more contrast. And if you go to the left, again, the Canon has a purple hue around the lens flare. This is very surprising because the Canon is double the price. I actually expected it to perform better here. And I'm starting to notice a trend with RF lenses, they just don't do well when pointed at the sun. We'll talk more about that later, but this has been very, very interesting how the Sigma is just maintaining better contrast throughout the entire image. Let's move on. On this image here, again, we have the Sony on the right, the Canon on the left. Both look really good. Zooming in, we're gonna see once it loads. Both of these images are very sharp, but here it does look like the Sigma might have missed focus just a little bit, it's not on the eye, and the Canon does look sharper. Interesting because when the Sigma nails focus, I would say they're equally as sharp, but so far in this comparison, we already have two images where the Sigma has missed focus by a little bit and has impacted the sharpness. So one thing to keep in mind, but from an image quality perspective, they both look great here. Now moving on to this image, Photos look solid, zooming in, let the camera load. We're gonna see here that on the right hand side, the Sigma just absolutely nailed focus on the eye and is incredibly sharp. And this time, the Canon actually missed focus and actually hit focus on the model's chin versus the eye. Before I got to this image, I was really thinking that the focusing problems were due to the third party lens, but the reality is, you know, cameras as good as they are, they're still gonna miss. And here we have a Canon photo with a native lens that still missed focus. So keep that in mind and let's move on to another set. Here again, Canon on the left, Sigma on the right. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in and both these images are tack sharp. Both these images look great. Zooming out, really no complaints. 
Again, you're gonna see the bokeh is rounder on the Canon, a little more oval shaped on the Sigma. In general, I don't have a preference on which one looks better. I think if I were to show these photos to a non-photographer, they would be happy with both and wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. So let's go ahead and go to the final set of images and then wrap up our thoughts. So here for the final image, we have the Sigma on the right, Canon on the left. What's interesting again is if you look at the settings, they're both the same, 1 500th of a second, 1.4, but the Sigma looks like it lets in a little bit more light, which is also very interesting. Zooming in, both are very sharp and not much of a difference. All these photos will be available in the link down below for you to download and play with yourself. So let me go ahead and wrap up this video and share my final thoughts. So what can we gather from this comparison? In the beginning of the video, I made the statement that I think Canon is scared of third party lenses. And after doing this comparison, I firmly believe that. Here we have the RF 85 that costs twice as much and it is not twice as good. As a matter of fact, in certain situations, the RF 85 performs worse than the cheaper Sigma 85 1.4. So what are their strengths? Now clearly the Sigma performs better with backlit subjects. It's a more contrasty lens. It's a smaller lens, it's lighter, and of course, it's cheaper. The RF 85 does go to 1.2, <laughs> but all jokes aside, it did nail more photos in focus. So out of this entire session, I did have more photos out of focus on the Sigma than I did with the RF 85. Now, I didn't have that many photos out of focus. I probably had around 10 with the Sigma, but I had a lot less with the Canon. So it does perform better. Now that could be the lens or it could be the body. Again, I shot this with the new R6 Mark II. With all that being said, if you're a Canon shooter, your options are limited. And I still highly recommend the RF 85 1.2 but I think it's very important to notice that third-party lenses in certain situations are better than first-party lenses. And I think this is the reason why Canon is stopping them from producing lenses for the RF mount. Can you imagine if you had both these options out today for the Canon system, how many more people would go by the Sigma? It just makes more sense. It's cheaper and it performs almost identically to the 1.2. So it's a smart business decision from Canon to not allow third-party lenses, but at the same time, it goes to show you that third-party manufacturers have caught up and in certain situations have started to outperform first-party lenses. Again, a fun comparison here. At the end of the day, both these lenses are a joy to use and they both produce magical results. Would love to hear your thoughts, like I said, the images are down below for you to play with, so play with them and let me know your thoughts. As always, guys, if you like this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one, guys. Peace.